September 12th, 2025. The night begins quietly, nothing unusual at first, until telescopes across the world pick up something that doesn't belong. Out of the deep darkness between stars, a massive intruder streaks into view, trailing a tail wider than five full moons lined up together. The image dwarfs every comet humanity has ever seen since the days of Oumuamua. Astronomers instantly realize they're watching history unfold. The shock deepened when another discovery followed almost immediately. From an entirely different part of the heavens, a large interstellar traveler was confirmed named as SWANC 2025 R2. Two bodies inbound simultaneously, converging on the same destination, the sun. Different origins, different paths, yet a single alignment. Experts struggled to put words to it, many describing the event as astronomically impossible. And yet the data spoke clearly. Official statements labeled them as comets, but behind closed doors, suspicion brewed. The precision of their movements felt uncanny almost deliberate. What appeared to be coincidence began to feel orchestrated, like some hidden design was playing out in the fabric of the cosmos. A question hung in the air. Was this truly chance, or had something been set into motion far beyond our understanding? The first piece of this strange puzzle began with NASA's SWAN instrument. On that September morning, it recorded a streak of light so brilliant it startled even seasoned observers. Against the stillness of the star field, this object blazed with unnatural intensity. Measurements quickly revealed its staggering size. Its tail spanned nearly two and a half degrees across the sky, five times wider than the full moon's glow. Ordinary comets do not behave this way, not on their first approach, not ever. Brightness estimates placed it at magnitude 7.4, bright enough for backyard astronomers to catch. With nothing more than binoculars, word spread like wildfire. From Australia to Europe, amateur sky watchers scrambled to confirm the sighting. Within 48 hours, breathtaking photographs began flooding in. Some images showed the comet's tail stretching so far that it almost escaped the frame as though the camera itself could not contain its immensity. By September 13th, the International Astronomical Union had stepped in. The discovery was officially confirmed and given a name, C-2025 R2 SWAN, honoring the very instrument that first captured its light. Suddenly, the world was watching. Professional astronomers, students, and passionate amateurs alike were locked in, sharing brightness curves, debating size, and marveling at the impossible sight. This was not another icy fragment from the distant Oort cloud. These numbers belong to legends like Hale-Bopp, or perhaps even further back in history. Swan was so luminous that anyone who knew where to look could spot it, its glowing tail cutting boldly through the constellation Virgo, and each passing hour seemed to make it brighter. Disbelief tangled with awe, conversations grew urgent. How could such a colossal tail form so quickly? What force was driving it? Professionals hesitated to answer, but amateurs asked the questions openly. This was not normal cometary behavior. Something about SWAN didn't add up. And as the world debated, a chilling reminder surfaced. SWAN was not alone. Just days earlier, another interstellar visitor had been confirmed. 3i slash ATL. AS. It was approaching from an entirely different region of the sky. Swan traced its path back through Aquarius, while Atlas was racing in from Sagittarius. On any map of the heavens, their origins were worlds apart, yet both were speeding inward toward the sun, and both were scheduled to reach their closest approach within days of each other. Swan's perihelion was marked for October 20th a distance of 150 million kilometers from the sun. Atlas would arrive three days earlier, October 17th, skimming by at 203 million kilometers. 
their closest points of passage lay only 50 million kilometers apart. To put that into perspective, closer than Mars ever comes to Earth. Even more unnerving were their orbital paths. Swan's trajectory was tilted more than 60 degrees off the solar system's plane, while Atlas came in nearly perpendicular. Two steep, tilted orbits, each from far-off directions, yet somehow converging within the same corridor of space at the same moment in time. To orbital specialists, this was not just rare, it was almost beyond possibility. And then came the cruelest twist of all. As both objects prepared for their fiery dances around the sun, Earth's telescopes would fall silent. From October 8th through the 18th, the glare of the sun would blind every instrument, leaving astronomers powerless. The most crucial moments, their closest approaches, would take place during a blackout window, completely hidden from human eyes. In astronomy, timing is everything. To witness not one, but two, immense visitors arriving together, only to have them vanish into the sun's glare at the very peak of their journey felt like fate taunting us. Coincidence, connection, or something else, no one could say. But the alignment gnawed at the minds of even the most skeptical scientists. And still, the story was far from finished. Early data revealed more anomalies. Atlas, the second visitor, showed signs of pulsing, accelerating unnaturally, as if something was guiding it. Swan glowed with an intensity too perfect, too steady, almost as though it was shielded by something more than ice and dust. Together, they were rewriting the rules of cosmic encounters. These were not ordinary comets. They were harbingers of a mystery larger than anyone was ready to face. And this was only the beginning. Whether it is a fortress, a probe, or something else entirely, Swan has pushed astronomers into uncharted territory. The familiar rules of comets no longer apply. And what once sounded like science fiction has suddenly entered the realm of scientific debate. Every anomaly recorded in SWAN and 3i slash ATLAS has shifted the question away from what they are to a far more unsettling one. What are they here to do? The numbers alone feel unnatural. One body on a 22,554-year orbit, looping through time across ages of ice and stone. The other on a hyperbolic open path, likely interstellar, never to return. And yet here they are, arriving side by side, separated by only days, both diving toward the sun. To dismiss this as random chance stretches belief. The timing, the geometry, and the coincidence of the blackout window have fueled theories that range from fascinating to frightening. One possibility is almost mundane, at least by cosmic standards, a scheduled stopover, a maintenance or refueling run. In this scenario, the sun itself is not just a star, but a pit stop, a natural power station. Both objects might be designed to harvest solar energy or tap into magnetic fields for recharging, for exchanging data, or for running a systems audit. On Earth, engineers already use solar flybys to slingshot spacecraft, boosting speed or conserving fuel. If these objects are machines, the sun would be the most logical place to top up. But another idea carries a far darker edge. This close approach could be an intervention a rendezvous to recover a failing unit, to neutralize a threat, or even to compete for some resource we cannot yet imagine. Energy estimates feed this suspicion. Atlas appears to carry reserves near 10 gigawatts. Swan, astonishingly, pushes into the range of 10,000. That is not passive drifting power. That is active, directed energy, enough for controlled maneuvers. Astronomers have logged stepwise accelerations, strange tail modulations, even micro-thrust pulses. These patterns whisper of intention, not randomness. And then comes the audit chain theory. Umwamua in 2017, Atlas today, Swan now. 
a sequence, each one more advanced than the last, each one arriving after decades of Earth's ever louder radio transmissions. Could these be escalating probes, sent not just to observe, but to assess, to report, perhaps even to respond? If so, the Sun is not just a backdrop, it is the power node, the meeting point, the beacon. No theory is complete, none settles the debate, but all force the same chilling question. If this is a mission, what is the mission for? The orbit of Swan adds yet another layer of unease. A cycle of 22,554 years is not just a statistic, it is a bridge through time. The last time Swan swept near the sun, glaciers covered much of the northern hemisphere. Humanity was scattered in small groups, barely beginning to carve meaning into stone. Ice cores drilled in Greenland and Antarctica show subtle but sudden changes from that era. Dust layers, chemical shifts, signs of sky events so dramatic they scarred the planet's atmosphere. Some researchers argue that comets like Swan could have left those marks. And there is Gobekli Tepe, an ancient site in southeastern Turkey, over 11,000 years old, where stone pillars rise in eerie circles. Among the carvings are animals, symbols, and patterns some claim represent the sky itself. A handful of theorists suggest these are records of celestial cycles, of comets returning after ages. Could Swan have been there before? Could its last passage have been etched into myth and stone? Mainstream scholars dismiss this as speculation, warning that human imagination too easily connects dots. But the timing is difficult to ignore. If Swan truly returns every 22,554 years, its last visit coincided with the dawn of human civilization. Coincidence or memory preserved across millennia? Yet just as these questions ignite, silence falls. From October 8th to 18th, every major ground-based observatory shuts down, blinded by the sun's glare. Officially, it is standard solar conjunction downtime. But behind the curtain, whispers tell another story. Internal memos from U.S. Space Command and the European Space Agency instruct teams to halt all radar sweeps, all high-resolution imaging of SWAN and ATLAS. Requests for raw data vanish into bureaucratic voids. Proposals for alternative coverage are denied without explanation. Scientists are told to wait, to remain silent until after perihelion. The blackout is total. At the very moment, two of the strangest visitors in modern history cross their closest approach. The official record goes dark. But the sky does not care about orders, and neither do the amateurs. Bill Gray, a respected veteran in orbital tracking, raises the alarm. Across public forums and encrypted channels, he rallies a network of backyard astronomers, university students, and small observatories. Keep your scopes on the sky, log every flicker, share the data before it disappears. His message spreads, and soon, grassroots coalitions spring to life. The Iberian Abaro Collective pools wide field sensors in Spain and Portugal. Private leaks hint at radio astronomers secretly repurposing weather satellites. From South America to Eastern Europe, ordinary people step into the role of frontline observers. For a brief window of time, the balance shifts. With government silent, it is the global amateur community that keeps the record alive. The blackout becomes more than an obstacle. It becomes a call to action. If you want answers, you must join the search. Anyone with a telescope, a radio dish, or a patch of clear sky can be part of the effort. And when Swan and Atlas re-emerge from the glare, it may not be a government lab that announces the first sighting. It might be someone standing in their backyard, eyes on the heavens, camera pointed upward. What we know is simple. Two anomalous objects have entered the inner solar system together, 
Their arrival defies statistics, breaks the rules of probability, and forces us to confront questions we have never faced before. What we do not know, what their purpose is, why they came now, and whether this is accident or design, still hangs in the void, waiting for an answer the skies may not be ready to give.